The elegant 18th century Dumfries house seems a world away from projects such as the Purley Centre. This Scottish stately home is an exquisite example of Adam Brothers architecture. It is filled with irreplaceable, original Chippendale furniture. Beautifully preserved, it's an almost unique piece of British heritage. But in 2007, Dumfries House was up for sale, with the furniture and fittings about to be auctioned off and scattered around the world. At the last minute, the estate was bought by the latest of the Prince's charities, which will preserve it intact and, by opening it to the public for the first time, serve as the catalyst for the regeneration of the whole region. For Dumfries House sits in an area as deprived as any in Britain. A situation that's about to improve with the creation of a new sustainable development in neighbouring Cumnock. I'm Hank Dittmar, I'm the chief executive of the Prince's Foundation for the Built Environment. The opening of Dumfries House will be a welcome wealth generator for an area that has struggled economically since the end of mining almost 20 years ago. The Cumnock plan will be anything but ordinary. Is there, I mean, all of this is public ownership, isn't it? The foundation does all of its work through a process called inquiry by design, which we've evolved as a way of marrying local intelligence and local input with our expertise in how to make communities that actually work for the long haul. Um, and that should link then to a kind of maybe enhanced facility at <coughs> College, perhaps within the new site, looking at traditional skills centre, local contractors, mm -hmm. skills and training development. Um, we would quite like a hotel, a nice fancy hotel. And the next three days you can spend figuring out how much that will all cost. <laughs> <laughs> we have so much influence from the public, um, and that's the whole nature of this uh, workshop. Um, so we take all that influence and put it into the master plan. A week later, the plans are coming together, and one completely new idea has emerged from the local community. The whole learning quarter idea really wasn't in our head at all. It emerged from the briefings on the first day about the state of education. And the idea there is to pool the skills of the local community colleges and provide sort of a lifetime learning environment focused on a series of opportunities to create jobs in the area of heritage skills, in the area of traditional building skills, and rural and agricultural skills. It's a feature of the planning by design process that an artist draws an impression of the plans as they unfold. There's something about eye-hand coordination and how you perceive space and perceive something that's only drawn out through the process of drawing. Miles Thistlethwaite is one of the artists whose work captures the character of the place in a way that no computer image can. This is the fourth inquiry by design I've been involved in for the Princess Foundation. In the, in the normal world, you know what the thing you're painting is going to look like. Here, it all has to come out of your head, and it also has to be done very fast. So it's um, a conjuring trick. Miles honed his skills at the Prince's Drawing School in East London, where artists gather to learn essential yet often neglected techniques. I'm Natasha Leon. I've always been passionate about drawing ever since I can remember. I always felt that I didn't have any structure to my drawing, and I always knew that there was a skill, but I didn't find anywhere that was teaching it. It's, it's beautifully vague, but I'm just like... What I like about the drawing school is that they're really passionate about drawing, because the head of my foundation course said that if she had it her way, she would ban life drawing. So I was incredibly thankful to find this place where you've got people teaching who've been teaching for over 35 years at all the top London art colleges. You can't argue with that.
Just downstairs from the drawing school, the Prince's School of Traditional Arts was created to preserve and teach other endangered skills. Students here learn a wide range of crafts from a whole range of cultural traditions. My name is Khaled Azam. I'm the director of the Prince's School of Traditional Arts. A lot of it has been lost because it's very much based on an oral tradition which is handed from one generation to another. And it's not just simply a matter of understanding certain patterns or a technique of doing something, but it's enabling somebody to bring this technique into life and to make it relevant and to be able to interpret it today. That's why we are different from a lot of other academic institutions. The knowledge taught by the school isn't simply esoteric. These skills can be put to practical use. And this is just what's happening. The students are designing goods for sale, providing an outlet for their achievements and creating an income stream for the school.